Welcome everyone. I'll be talking about our method pathway GNN, which is an explainable graph neural network to predict drug response in cancer. The main idea is that from cancer patients, we develop preclinical models. These are cancer cell lines. From these cancer cell lines, we generate molecular profiles of cancer cells in the form of genomic, epigenomic, transcriptomics, and proteomics data. In parallel, drug screening experiments are also conducted to obtain drug sensitivity measurements. Now, these two data sets combined, uh, are combined into a model to get a prediction uh, of drug sensitivity for new cancer patients or new cancer cell lines. The data that we use is mainly uh, the omics data uh, from GDSC database. This is a large scale pharmacogenomic study in which thousands of cancer cell lines are screened for uh, with uh, hundreds of anti-cancer drugs. Uh, we use three types of data, including gene expression, CNV, and mutation. And the main measurement of drug response in our study is IC50. We have taken 18 drugs for this study, including targeted as well as chemotherapies. Uh, these are targeting different tissue types of uh, cancer and uh, various types of cancer signaling pathways. The overview of the pathway GNN pipeline, we, we start with data pre-processing to remove all kinds of inconsistency uh, and fix imputation problems. Finally, we subset all the three types of omics data sets to common genes and we get this multi-omics integration integrated data set. For the pathway data, we have used uh, cancer signaling pathways from KEC database. For drug structure data, we have used SMILES format from PubChem database. Now, why do we use, why, why do we prefer graph structure in this case? Is to mainly leverage the structure of the pathway. For example, it uh, the architecture of the simple neural network, that is a multilayer perceptron, it cannot leverage the huge amount of information available in the graph structure. Whereas a, a structure like this, uh, where each node is connected exactly in the same way uh, as it is connected in the actual pathway, it gives us huge advantage. Uh, followed by this, we train the model of the pathway GNN. We have two representations, one coming from cell lines, where this is the graph structure of a pathway, where each node represents a cell, uh, a gene, and uh, these nodes are enriched with the multiomics uh, data. And then we have a, another graph structure of the drug, where each node is an atom and the connections are are basically the edges are the connections between the atoms. This are enriched with the physical chemical properties of the drug. Both these representations, they merge into two fully connected neural networks and which finally merge into one single node that predicts the IC50. We also did model interpretation. Starting with the interpretation results, first we identified some drugs uh, for example, this is a drug called Nevitoclax. Then we identified some responding cell lines and some non-responding cell lines. Here, this is Emax versus IC50. Emax basically represents the amount of cells killed after the concentration range at the maximum concentration. Um, and these are the, the circles plot basically represents the drug targets, uh, the nevitoclax drug targets, um, the higher the interaction score, the higher the, the, uh, they are ranked. And this data is downloaded or retrieved from DGIDB database. Next, we get uh, the node importance score using a tool called GNN Explainer. So this basically gives a ranked list of all the nodes according to their important score uh, 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 for the prediction. Uh, the last step is that we set a null hypothesis uh, is that 
the top 20% most important genes for predicting a given cell line's drug response are not enriched in the target genes of the drug, whereas the alternate hypothesis is that the top 20% most important genes um, are enriched in the target genes of the drug. In order to see if this is really happening or not, we have taken, we have tested this hypothesis on four different drugs. And in the green box here, these are all responding cell lines. These are non-responding cell lines. And as we can see that um, the top 20% genes are actually enriched with the drug targets for the responders and vice versa for the non-responding cell lines. The threshold set here is 0.05, the FDR threshold for the enrichment analysis. And uh, these are the further details of each cell line and their tissue types, what was their p-value and their FDR values. We also tried to find out um, key, uh, like the important genes based on the expression, gene expression data. Um, we tested the top 20% genes uh, ranked by the gene and explainer and did a, uh, a classical GCA analysis. And here we identified that um, the model is actually able to um, make the predictions based on the hallmarker genes of the cancer cell lines, which means that the model is actually um, able to differentiate well between the responders and non-responders using the correct set of genes. Then we compared lastly um, our method PathwayGNN with a recently published method GraphTRP. The architecture is very similar. Although we have used the gene expression data, um, they have used only uh, mutation and CNV data. We have used all uh, in addition to CNV and mutation, we have used gene expression as well. Um, so, and we both predict IC50. Uh, our architectures are also different. Uh, we have also encoded the CNV and mutation data in a different manner. The results uh, clearly indicate that the graph uh, pathway gene and method clearly outperforms graph DRP and a baseline multilayer perceptron method in both uh, Pearson and Spearman correlation and also uh, with the errors. So uh, pathway genin has the lowest error. Thank you all for your attention. If you have any questions, I would be happy to take them.